guys, Hazards280 here. Just doing a review video on my 2018 Toyota 4Runner TRD Off-Road. Now yes, I did say my, this this is the replacement to our 15 Grand Cherokee that I just did a review video on. So prior to the Grand Cherokee, we had a Wrangler. I moved back to a Grand Cherokee since I had one prior to the Wrangler. And now we have the 4Runner. So there's a few reasons as to why we changed. I'll add those towards the end of the video. If you stay tuned, you can hear about all as to why. But really, for those of you that are just looking for a quick review video on these, uh, that's, I'll get right to the point with that. So uh, the pros with the 4Runner and why we really went with it. Uh, body on frame construction. I'm not a particularly a fan of the unibody. And I like everything that you can do with a body on frame vehicle with lifts and the aftermarket supports just so much better. So um, as you can see, I've already made a couple changes to this 4Runner as, as it sits. So resale value is uh, number two. These The resale value on these 4Runners is ex absolutely spectacular. Three, I love the drivetrain. The 4 liter V6 is, is rather old, old, but it has a great uh, torque, num torque numbers and horsepower numbers, and the power is very linear, and it's tried and true, uh, very reliable. And then uh, number four is, uh, kind of falls right back in line with that engine is the reliability. So this is a very reliable vehicle, and it's not to say the Grand Cherokees weren't reliable, um, but I know I'm gonna get a better reliability out of this form runner. So this color is actually magnetic gray metallic, and it's kind of hard to tell in the video here, but it is a very deep paint, especially in the sunlight. Now this is a brand new vehicle. It's got about 1,200 miles on it now, but uh, the color just really pops on this 4Runner. So this generation has gone from 2010 till 2018 now, and we really don't know how much longer it'll go. I would assume that they'll be doing a refresh relatively soon, but you never know with Toyota. In 14, they did do a new front end. You can see it's much more aggressive than the 2010 to 2014 genre or era. And uh, they really kind of revised that and some of the rear end and wheels and stuff changed a bit too through the years. So, uh, and just on side note, there is a lot of wind here today. So my apologies if you're getting some wind noise there. The tires were replaced. This what, stock was a 265-70R17 uh, dueler tire. I don't know if it was BF Goodrich or Goodyear or what, but... It wasn't a fan. It's kind of a mom mobile tire. It's an you know it's an off road vehicle with a locking rear differential with an all all terrain or all season, not even all season. It's a highway tire. It was, it looked silly on here. So I replaced it with some 275 70R17 BF Goodrich KO2s, and we are actually putting on a lift this Sunday. It's Friday, and this is on Sunday. We'll be putting on an Old Man Emu BP51 coilover setup on this as well. So you're going to see about a two and a half to three inch lift on that. The front windows, or the front driver and passenger window is 10 to 20%. Outside of the tires and the window, this is totally stock. All right, let's look at the back first. So you can see, I like the angles on this back, I guess. There's no way I can put it, it's very boxy, but I've always enjoyed looking at it. Aesthetically pleasing, I guess, to me. The, the tail lights are LED, so the portions right here are LED. This top turn signal is not, and then your rear uh, turn or backup lamps are not as not either. These ones actually have been replaced since I bought the vehicle to LED, but from the factory, those are incandescent bulbs. And then I've also replaced the uh, license plate bulbs with LED as well. Now this back window is quite unique with these four runners, and it actually goes down. So from the top all the way down, that comes right down. It's just another power window. So. We have a German Shepherd, and I don't know if you saw him in one of our earlier videos or not, but he really likes that. I mean, I put the window down going down the road, and it creates a nice breeze going through the inside, and it just it really does great. So I, that was a perk for us because it kind of lets him enjoy the ride as well. So you do have your towing hitch, and then your four and seven pin receiver or seven pin plugs are below as well. You do have a spare. Backup camera is right here. Now you cannot get the 4Runner with a power lift gate, even in the limited trim levels. It's just not an option. So not an option for you guys if you really want that. Now I did uh, actually cover all of the cargo area with uh, canvas back cargo uh, covers. So this connects and covers the entire inside of the vehicle with this nice canvas material. It's on the seat backs and I bought a Wrangler net to cover the back end as well. It matches the red stitching and looks very nice, but it also protects the back here from the dog. So it's 
covered and it even covers the hatch. Now that you can get this with a sliding cargo deck that comes right out and closes, I, I, I wasn't a big fan of it. I, for us, we don't really need it. I liked having the additional height, the floor height um, for the dog. So underneath here, you do have some storage pockets. And then there's a large storage bin behind here as well. And then behind that even, you do have a 400 watt power outlet, which you can kick on from the front seat. Although it only works in the vehicles in neutral or in park, beyond that it only put out 120 some watts while going down the road. And then you have a 12 volt outlet as well. The openings for the D-rings were left open on the cargo piece. There's another storage bin there. And that's about it for the rear. You do have two grab handles, which is nice for that, as well as a uh, another grab handle right there. All right, now step looking into the back here. You can see you do have that same red stitching that goes throughout the vehicle. And then this is actually soft X, soft X leather is what Toyota calls it. Now it's not a true leather, it's a synthetic leather. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit more environmentally friendly, easier to keep clean. And it's not supposed to wear around these corners in the same way that standard leather does. It is also a lighter material, so it keeps weight down in the vehicle and um, it just feels nicer. So when you're touching it, it doesn't feel like vinyl is the only way I can put it, but it also, you can tell it's not leather. So I guess you have to go to the Toyota dealer and get, uh, you know, feel for it yourself, but I'm a fan of it. I'm, I, I, I like leather in some regard, but there's some pros and cons to it that I, I don't like, and the cons being the heat in the summertime, and the Softex leather is supposed to re repel a lot of that heat. So the black interior, that was a big perk for us. So to fold these down, you just lift that up like I showed you. Fold down this headrest, press this button, and it comes down. You can see there are some cutouts here for the seat, and that folds nicely. There is a slight bump here you can still see in the seat. Now, if this net wasn't here to keep the dog's head, you know, away from being draped over the seats and drool and all that jazz, this would be a very large cargo space. Now, this actually has about 25% more cargo volume than the Grand Cherokee did, and there's really a big difference in the headroom back there. So. In the Grand Cherokee, it was almost cutting down right there due to the arch. And the dog's ears were always folded over, and it was just kind of funny. And But also, when you actually went to put stuff back there, you found that that angle really created a lot of issues. So having that open and kind of squared off really helps out quite a bit. That's it. The center piece does come down. This does come down to offer a armrest for your backseat passengers. Now I am about five foot nine. And sitting in the back here, you can see I have a pretty good amount of leg room left. And then for my head, I've got a couple inches, but it's worth noting that with the sunroof, you can see there is a kind of indentation in the roof right here. So if I were to put my head any further forward, I would be hitting it here. So if you have some very tall teenagers or anything like that, you should probably have them sit in the back if, or maybe that's their hint to get out of the damn house. I don't know, but just to note, headroom is something to be possibly concerned about. For me, I have absolutely no problems. I could go on a long road trip, but someone that's a few inches taller may have some concerns. The armrest does feel good, nicely padded. You do have controls to turn your vents on and off in the rear, and you have two 120 volt power outlets that are 12 or 120 watt 12 volt power outlets. You can see on the doors on both sides here, you do have red stitching going across. There is a nice uh, detent or indent, excuse me, in the door here. I like to sit my cell phone in there and it does a great, great job holding it. It's actually rubber padded and holds it in place. All four windows are, are one touch automatic. You can see that there. All right, let's move forward to the front. All right, 
Now looking at the driver's door, you can see that same indentation here as well. And the phone does sit nicely in there. You do have soft, softly padded armrests. This is softly padded as well. Again, you have all of the controls up here for your uh, windows. They are all auto. Power locks, your, your window lockouts, lock, door handle here. There is a nice, almost like a grippy material or perhaps it's just something in the rear, but it does provide a nice grip when you grab. It doesn't slide, I'm noticing. So it was actually something I noticed during our test drive. It's not such as something I've noticed now. You do have a cup holders. Toyotas are definitely known to include a lot of cup holders. I think they think Americans are just obsessed with drinking, but anyhow, those are here. And then looking at your center console here, you do have a clock in the top up here. It's just a, a digital clock. Infotainment system. This is the Intune uh, 2.0, or uh, I believe that they don't actually have the 3.0 system in these yet. Manual climate controls with nice knobs. Nice solid feel to these. You can see the clicks all line up well with the hash marks. This is just an OCD thing for me, but if they didn't, that would drive me nuts. Manual controls here, recirculate, heated rear view mirror, and heated power mirrors. And then this is your temperature control here as well. So, and see how that's set up. You do have storage down here. You have a USB and aux. I do have a USB plugged into this. Another 12 volt, 12 watt, damn it, 120 volt, 120 watt, 12 volt power outlet. Passenger airbag system as well as, uh, um, alarm status. With the TRD off-road, you do get the TRD off-road shift knob. This one does also keep retain that red stitching that you're seeing throughout the vehicle, and it does have the TRD text on the top. You do have a full carbon fiber finish to the center console as well. It looks nice. It doesn't really have a cheesy look, and in fact, it's a little bit darker than what the video is showing you here. You have your heated seat controls. I really do like the fact that this can be adjusted up and down and I can just leave this on in the winter time all the time so to me that's a great perk cup holder here as well as up here um, avoids confusion on who's his and hers this is mine this is hers and this is a great spot for your wallet I have found now another thing that I really like with these is this is your shift knob so you can see you got your standard two high you have four high neutral and four low so to do this you just grab and pull back go forward or over and up so the just that tactical grabbing the shift lever and it's not a shift lever but grabbing a lever and then changing that um it's just it's nice i don't have to question if it's working there's not some electronic doodad to mess up and it's just gonna work i know it's locked in because i pulled back and i'm good i hate grabbing those knobs turning them and staring at a blinking dot is it gonna work or not no stop doing that i i have no just Stop it. I don't care if this uses a little bit more space. I want to do it myself and I want to trust it. All right. Looking up top here, you can see you do have home link controls. You have your power sliding moonroof, A track, stability control, and your locking rear diff. Right here, you do have your crawl control functions. So you can see medium to high speed on and off. And then this is your multi-terrain select. So we'll go through that here in a second. But this is a full op a plethora of options for you here to pick, you know, mogul, loose rock, sand, things like that. It actually helps the vehicle adjust what it's doing to help you get across that terrain uh, properly. Now moving on to the component that you as a driver are going to use pretty much every day. So center cluster here we'll go through in a second. On your steering wheel, you do have your phone controls here to pick up, hang up and also control your voice commands. Now I have talked to some people that have heard me on the phone here and they said that they can hear me quite well. There is some background noise and some so and an additional to the Grand Cherokee, but in general this is a slightly louder interior than the Grand Cherokee. It's not loud, but it is a little bit louder than the Grand Cherokee's was. This display button controls the center cluster here. Then you have your volume controls for your audio system. The mode change for your audio, you can press this and hold it to mute it as you can see in the picture here this backs up on what you're using on your control screen here and then this is just uh, really control going around the screen um, for instance in the usb stick i go through all my songs i can press the center button brings up a guide of all my tracks and then i go through it here and select it so works quite well 
Now, one thing I did notice with this 4Runner that I find to be rather odd is this was a $41,000 vehicle, um, and I don't have automatic headlights. Daytime running lamps, parking lamps, and, high, and my headlights, but yes, I do have to manually turn these on every time I'm going down the road, so definitely something to get used to. I haven't had automatic, head, not had automatic headlamps in, I don't think, any car I've ever owned, so definitely odd there. This is your fog light controls, turn signal, and I'll actually kick on the key here so you can hear the turn signal. So you can see, it's not too loud. It's actually a pet peeve of mine is when vehicles have extremely loud turn signals. Looking to the left here, you do have your left and right mirror controls, your instrument panel brightness up and down, you do have some ambient lighting that does shine down from the centerpiece here, down to here, and it controls all the lighting in the vehicle. So you can actually turn this all the way down and turn off all the lights on the dash, which is very nice for driving at night. Now, basically, yes, you set your cruise control, you know how fast you're going before you do that. There is no option here. I think this might be just something internationally that you could use this for. Uh, and then I know some of these, like with the Limited, you can get power running boards and stuff. So I'd assume that's what one of these two switches are for. This is your controls for your power outlet in the, in the rear. So 400 watts going down the road, 100 watts when you're driving. And this right here actually is the heating element for the bottom of your windshield wipers. So there's an element along the bottom where those wipers sit that keeps the ice off if you're driving down the road in a cool area. And then actually on the right here, on the left, excuse me, there's an element going up this pillar that prevents ice from building up right here when you're going down the road in cold climates. So just little things like that mean a lot to me. I mean, who thinks of that stuff? I mean, it's ingenious. So yes, I do have to manually turn on my lamps, but I have heated a heated windshield. Like, what the fuck? Like, it just drives me nuts. So anyhow, whatever. Looking at the dash quality here, this is plastic. So, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. This has a nice textured feel to it, but it is a nice looking dash piece. Uh, glove compartment, I have it locked right now, unfortunately, but it's just a standard glove compartment, nothing special. Like I said, the door pads are, the door panels are padded, so that's a nice perk there. And the seats are very comfortable. I mean, I have absolutely no complaints. I do like that TRD is in the headrest. That's part of the TRD off-road premium package. So the seats in the Grand Cherokee sucked. I mean, and I, and I don't want to roll into the Grand Cherokee here, but they were the worst possible seats I've ever sat in a car. They were garbage. I mean, in a fifty-some thousand dollar car, you'd expect some kind of plushness to them. And we both hated those seats. So and we actually found the 2015s to have slightly worse seats than the 2011, and both of them were very high, you know, upper tier levels. One was an Overland Summit, and one was an Overland. So, very odd to me. I don't know. So, anyhow, seats, Toyota, you did a great job here. I do like the amount of cushion, but it's also not too soft and kind of in, in, in return feeling like a, like a Cadillac or something. So, let's turn the cluster on and you know, feel for what it looks like here. So you do have a key. There is no option for a keyless entry unless you get a limited. I want to show you what this looks like when it turns on as well. Toyota. And then I actually put on a custom startup screen to have TRD pop up on there. So really like that. You can see there's 249 miles on this vehicle. This little gauge here does show you if your wheels are turned, doors are open, anything like that. That's a nice little screen there for you. There are a couple settings to adjust on here. I've turned, there's not very much. I mean, I can hold it and show you. You have language units, an eco lamp, which pops up, which I'm not a big fan of. It's a little leaf in the bottom corner. So I turn that off. And your average miles per gallon. I'm sitting at about 16.8. Your current MPG, if I was moving, it would have uh, 20, 40, 60. I don't know why it doesn't say like 5, 10, 15, 20, because this thing's not even getting remotely going to hit 40. Um, cruising range, lapse time, and your speedometer. So just to note, I just turned this vehicle on, and I've been filming on and off for about 25, 30 minutes here, and these seats are already warm. So another thing we didn't like about the Grand Jerky is the seats, 
in themselves sucked, but also the seat heaters sucked. You could turn them on on high for two hours and you were like, oh, I think I feel something on my tush. And that was it. But like these are literally, I'll turn them off because they get a little bit too warm, but they get warm quick and I love it. So no complaints there. I think it's absolutely spectacular with how well these work. And I also do like the illumination on these gauges at night. It's a very crisp, clean illumination. There's not a lot of, um, it's not harsh on your eyes is how I can put it. It's a crisp and clean. There's actually a term for these gauges and what they're called by Toyota. I can't recall what they are, but they're like Optitron or something like that, but they're just a nice clean gauge. And I do like the coloring of everything. So at night, these actually are all blue. Yeah, I just turned them on so you can see some of the color that's coming through here but it's just a nice color to have at night. Seems to do well. So now looking at the infotainment system, you can see sitting here at the one screen that I'm using right now, now this is called our home screen. So this has your audio on it and then it also has navigation. So you can interact with both from the same screen. And then actually this is what's considered two panel setup. There's a three panel setup as well. And I disabled that so you guys didn't see any private information on there. So. Um, works out really well now the whole system is very responsive and i do enjoy that if you know you click on audio it happens very quickly i click browse comes through things just work very well and if i go to audio here you can see it does load in some label art this does use grace note so everyone's images of uh, people that are your artists and stuff kind of load into that that screen there you do have bluetooth audio as well and you have pandora cd player which is nice and xm fm radio you do have the option to actually pause your radio and go back to live or play, so that's that's fairly nice. The XM radio, I don't really use it. Quality is subpar. It's a free trial, but I've turned it on twice now probably. I haven't used it. Pandora works really well with your phone and Slacker and iHeartRadio as well. Those do use your phone data, unfortunately, but it does work well, and I do like that it's there built in. Going into apps, you do have traffic updates, weather, maintenance does show on here. So my oil change, my rotation, for example, I just put these tires on, uh, literally just put them on. So 2,983, they're going to be rotated, and you can do all of your all of your maintenance items right from that screen. Your messages is your text messages, so I won't go through those. And unfortunately, this is a lot of personal information on here. So you can check into Facebook and do all of these items on the screen here. Again, going through your phone data. You can check stocks, fuel prices around you, and as well as use Slacker Radio and check some sports figures. So, audio quality. This isn't the Limited's JBL system, but this is a good quality system. I believe it is upgraded over like the SR5 because I did have to pay to upgrade to this premium system. So, it sounds very good. It's not, um, it's not the Harman Kardon sound system that was in the Grand Cherokee, but it's upgradable. There's a company out there called OEM Audio Plus that does great plug and play replacements. And I'm looking at possibly doing their system. I'm just going to have to get that price down a little bit. It's like a $1,600 audio system. So definitely down the road, nothing I'm running into. But um, for right now, it does just fine. There's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight speakers in here. So it does fine. There were like 18 in the Grand Cherokee, but um, it's fine. I, I don't really need those things. So Overall, great system. It's very quick, responsive. I do like that at night, if I want to just turn the screen off, I can. I have it set up to have TRD on the screen at night, but if I wanted to, I could just turn off the wallpaper and this goes black and I can have all my gauges black as well. So I really enjoy that and it just it's, it really just works really well. It did come with these all-weather floor mats as well as some summer mats as well. These do lock in place with some tabs here. These are great because we're coming into winter here in Michigan. Okay, let's step out and take a look at the engine. That is Toyota's 4 liter V6 engine. I'll put the power statistics in the description or within the video. That is a 200 and I think it's 278 and 260 something, but uh, I'll confirm. Um, I don't want to be wrong. I'll let you guys know at what range that actually produces that power. 
What I can tell you is in daily driving, you do have a sport mode as well as a normal drive mode, and it does really well. Now, comparing this to the Wrangler is very difficult with the 3.6 liter Pinastar. They had similar power figures, and the thing is, I, I feel like this has a little bit better low-end torque, it feels like, at least by seat of your pants. I don't have to get on the throttle as much to do things as I did in the Wrangler. So, and that was even pre 37 inch wheels. So I think it's geared very well. Now, unfortunately it is only a five speed transmission, but I don't think it holds it back. You know, if you're going 80 on the expressway, unfortunately you're gonna be revving a little bit higher than you may like. But I also like the fact that I'm revving higher at 80 miles an hour. That tells me that they're gearing this vehicle to really do well at those lower speeds. So. All told, I'm very, very happy with my purchase here. It's it's a great vehicle. It drives well. It feels it's I mean it's essentially a, a truck because it's got it's got a, it's got a frame. I mean it's it's it drives phenomenally well. You do get some nose dive, but that's going to be corrected with my my suspension lift here. And there's just no complaints. It's it's a well built vehicle. There's no squeaks, no rattles. I know it's new, but it's not uncommon for new GM, Ford, Chrysler products to have squeaks and rattles. And it just does what it needs to do and it's not trying to be something that it's not. The Grand Cherokee, the, we went through water pumps in that vehicle quite often. Every 60,000 miles we had to put a new water pump in that 5.7 liter V8. Now it was always covered under warranty for the most part except for one but it was outside of 100,000 miles but I just don't like to tinker with those things and we also had issues with this, the wheels on the Overland Summit delaminating due to salt and stuff. Now rather that happens, to, I'm sure that happens to every manufacturer but Every Grand Cherokee I looked at with these wheels were going through the same process. And some squeaks and rattles were issues. It, not to say they weren't bad. They weren't bad vehicles. And I'm not going to say the WK2 is a bad product lineup because it's not. But I wanted something with a better resale that was a little bit more me. And for what I have, this is almost like a Grand Cherokee and a Wrangler had a child. It would be a Forerunner. And it's really a great match for me. So I don't see this 4Runner going away anytime soon. It just, it feels right, it drives right, and it holds its value. So I, I have no reason to get rid of it. Even if they and if they do get rid, revise the range, this 4Runner, there's a solid chance it's gonna have the new 3.5 liter V6 that's found in the Tacoma. Now, I'm not a big fan of that engine, unfortunately. You get the rev it quite high to get power out of it. And yeah, sure, the fuel economy is a little better, but do we want, you know, life's too short to drive boring cars, I guess is the way I'll put it, right? We have the scat pack for the weekends, and this is not a boring vehicle for me. I really enjoy this. So, yeah, I have to put in more fuel, but I enjoy it. So, shouldn't you enjoy the vehicle you drive for the most part? So, that's my take on it. Take it for what it is. Now, if you guys have any questions on this 4Runner, please, please leave comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and if it was helpful to you, please give me a like. You know, I like to know when I'm doing right for you guys. And uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to do in videos, please feel free to add that as well. I will try to incorporate that in future reviews. And then finally, if you'd like to see these videos in the future going forward as you come into YouTube and you're going through your, your playlists here, or your almost like your news feed for YouTube, subscribe to the video. And if you really like, you can click the bell video and that will actually notify you when I upload a video. But if you don't want anything too intrusive, just press subscribe and you'll see what videos are coming through. And I can also take recommendations as well. So, all right, guys, take care. And I will do an update video once these BP-51s are installed.